Welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where professionals in the field inform, educate and inspire the community to be healthier, more balanced and live the lifestyle they love. And today we have Carolyn Pope in the studio. She's an animal communicator and therapist. And we are going to be talking about the art of animal communication. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Yeah, it's lovely to have you. Now, can anybody communicate with animals? Absolutely. We are all born with the ability to communicate. Communication is telepathics. Tele is distance. Pathics is feeling. So essentially, it's feeling over a distance. We're all born with the ability. A mother takes her baby into the hospital and says, there's something wrong with my baby. The doctors and nurses always listen because most of the time there is. Identical twins, one just knowing what the other's doing, that's been documented throughout history. It's all telepathics. But of course, from the baby's perspective, unless it's actually dying, telepathics really don't get validated. Then the child says its first word, mom or dad or whatever, everyone makes a fuss. So the child learns verbalizing gets my needs met, telepathics not so much. Then they get that bit older and yeah, you know, they might say the pony's got a stomach ache or the dog's got a headache. And often parents will either punish the child for lying or make fun of them. Don't be silly, horses can't talk. So of course you start shutting down on one and building up on the other. And telepathics is like any muscle. You don't use it, you lose it. And how can we communicate with animals? Clear mind, always a good thing. People that meditate, I don't, um, often find that helpful. Water's really important because you're using your energetic field. It's electromagnetic. Think of the snowy hydro scheme. The more water you drink, the easier it is. As a coffee addict, I really struggled with that in the beginning. But also don't start with your own animals. Start with someone else's because you need to remain detached in order to know what you're getting is from that particular animal and not from yourself. You know, it's like doctors don't treat their own children. Clairvoyants never read for themselves. You need that detachment, particularly when you're starting and you also need honest feedback so you know whether you're on the right track or not. Um, do you have any examples of animal communication that you could share? Absolutely. Very first, when I'd read the book, I actually started by reading a book back in the mid 90s called Surprise, Surprise, Commuting, Communicating with Animals by a guy called Arthur Myers, who was a journalist. Went down the horse paddock and the first horse I saw told me it wanted clean water. I looked in the trough, there was nothing there. I spent two and a half years working every day, giving myself the migraine from hell quite often before I got anything else. And every time that horse walked by me, if he was on the lead rope, he'd plant his feet, stop and eyeball me. I'd love to know what the poor guy was trying to get through. Never got through anything again. Uh, one horse I worked with, the owner had um, called me as a last resort. The horse twice a year would blow up massively with fluid. It was down at the Werribee Vet School. It actually had to have a tracheotomy to keep breathing. That's how much fluid we're talking. They were feeding it bananas by the dozen because they were having to give it so much frutics or frusamide diuretics to get rid of the fluid that it was losing all its potassium. They were going to euthanize it. Again, this was before internet. She literally pulled out a whole trolley full of vet notes. Started talking with the mayor and the first thing she showed me was her foal and then said, problem's been since then. And the owners went, oh my God, she's never come back in season since she had the foal. And then they realized that the twice a year she was having the problem was actually when horses come in season twice a year. And it was when this was happening. A craniosacral therapy session from, this was before I did it, from the lovely Deb Lee and a couple of bottles of she oak, the Australian bush flower essence, and the mare never had a problem again. Craniosacral therapy was derived from osteopathy, I think about 35, 40 years ago, but don't quote me on the dates. Uh, there was a couple of different people that discovered it, but basically your cranio is your cranium, sacral is your sacrum. The craniosacral rhythm can be felt anywhere on the body. You've got your heart rate, you've got your respiratory rate, you've got your cranial rhythm. 
CST as it's called, craniosacral CST for short, much easier for most people, um, works on the limbic system in the brain, so the emotional part of the brain. The most pressure you're putting on a body is literally that of a five cent piece. And then you're, it's basically that whole doing and non-doing. The body's got its own wisdom. It knows what it needs. And quite often what a practitioner thinks the body needs versus what the body actually needs is a little bit like the Montagues and the Capulets. So you're simply allowing the body to unwind. And that's what I love about it. You'll have physical releases, you'll have emotional releases. Animals can process for two to three days afterwards and the results really are profound. And yet it's so gentle, you can do it on a newborn. And could you give us some tips on how we can communicate with animals? Think of, for most people, I think they find the proverbial thought bubble. You know, the little cartoon bubbles, putting a thought in there and throwing it at the animal. And whatever you get back first, that very instantaneous, that's communication. Quite often when I'm talking with an animal, the owner will get as far as, did he, do they? I've already got the answer, yes or no, because a thought is instantaneous. Trying to put words to something, particularly if it's an important concept, can take you a second or two. And of course, the thoughts being so instantaneous, it's trust your gut. That's the biggest thing. And whatever comes into your mind first, don't try and do the logical right brain versus left brain argument, you only wind up with a headache. Trust that gut, whatever you get instantaneously and first is right, every time. Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. That was fascinating. If you want more information on Carolyn Pope and the art of animal communication, head to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. Stay with us after the break, another interesting guest with an exciting topic.